All right, I'd like to call to order the August 2021 meeting of the Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors. Are we in certified in compliance with the open meeting law? We are. The agenda was posted on August 12th at 3 p.m. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Next item of business is roll call. Supervisor Montemayor, are you present? Supervisor Wegner. Here. Thank you. One more check with Supervisor Montemayor. All right. Supervisors present. Next is the approval of the July 19th, 2022 journal. Supervisor Brower. A motion to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Brower. Is there a second? Supervisor Procheck. I will support that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Procheck. Under discussion? Assuming Supervisor Ellis and Gearing were chiming in to do the second. Supervisor Wagner. Okay. All those in favor of the journal, please vote. Or against. Supervisor Wagner. Yes. Thank you. Supervisor Gruber. Motion is approved. Next is presentations. We have none. Public addresses. We have eight. Uh, the first is Jim Davies of Oostburg speaking on the airport FBO. All eight are speaking on the FBO. Is Jim here? Want to come up? <clears throat> Podium, you want five minutes? Okay, I've been asked to uh, address the FBO scenario at the airport. And um, over the years, the FBO that's currently working there hasn't given us as pilots and uh, aviators any services. So when this subject came up, I got all excited. There isn't an airplane on the field to rent. There's not a um, student training on the field. So I, and then uh, talking to, at AirVenture at night in a circle with guys talking about what may be going on here with uh, FBO, people got all excited. We have no services at the Sheboygan County Airport right now, and it's been kind of a negative thing. So I just want to say that what I've heard about the county getting involved, that it looks like we can make many many improvements there. Um, fuel prices for those of us that fly. We check for flight or whatever to uh, check fuel prices. Do we really want to buy from Sheboygan County Airport? So then I said, well, there's Hartford and different ones that are very low in comparison. They have no services. But then the next guy says, neither does Sheboygan County Airport have services. So what does that have to do with anything with, with fuel prices? So I'm just speaking in favor of making a change out there. Um, that's what I have. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Gary Grit of Sheboygan Falls.
Hi, my name is Gary Grit. I live in uh, N4473 Van Trick Trail in the town of Lima. And I have been an owner of a hangar out at the airport for 25 years. And I also have a hangar up in Sturgeon Bay for 20 years. And through his years, I've seen a lot of changes at the FBO in Sheboygan. So I'm in support of a needed change at the airport at the FBO, FBO for following reasons. One, um, my partner in the airplane flies a contract pipeline patrol three times a month. So he goes through all of Wisconsin and into Illinois. And I ride along with him about half the times. We make two stops, one in Kenosha and one in Janesville, both FBOs. I got to say, they greet us with a smile and they give us a cut rate and price at both the airports. It, it is a good feeling, and they're a privately run FBO. And we do take advantage of that before we come back to Sheboygan. And I talked with the owner. I was also one of the original um, startup for the flight flying club out at the airport, and I sold it off. And so I called up Eldon Elsie, who is the owner now. And he says he's purchased over $50,000 worth of fuel in the last year. But he's only bought $5,000 worth of fuel on, at Sheboygan. So he's been dissatisfied. Mostly it's because of the pricing. That's what they're... And up in the FBO in Sturgeon Bay, where I have my other hangar, I've been always happy with it pleased with the experiences up there at the FBO, and that's a county-run airport, FBO. Always had the good services and always been satisfied. So I hope in Sheboygan, we can, I think that the county can also run it as well as Door County runs theirs. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Uh, next, Raymond Seavers. My name is Raymond Seavers, 6130 95th Avenue, Kenosha, Wisconsin. When I had lunch today, somebody asked me what FBO stands for. And, you know, a layperson really don't really understand. I, don't, I think everybody in this room knows what FBO really is. Because uh, I operate five airplanes. I'm based out of Kenosha, and I come here often at least a half dozen times a month over the last decade. But I'm no longer able to park on the uh, borough's ramp. I've been literally kicked off of it. I think the main reason why is the economics weren't there for the FBO for me to be keep going there. Um, coming from Kenosha, I don't need a lot of fuel. But back to my question over lunch, what's an FBO? They're the people that take care of me, you, anybody in this room that flies. I knew about seven years ago when I, before I got kicked off the ramp, something wasn't healthy. I was charged $300 for two hours in the hangar for 182, a couple hours to just hold out. And as some of you in this room might know, that's totally out of line. And then I knew that something there, so let's again go back now to a business cycle. And as you know, this is high season for golfers and everybody that comes into here, corporates. But to come back here, low season, let's say after New Year's, there's nothing really there. And I think that's what's been the problem is, the FBO is just striving to survive the current operator because the cash flow is either high in the summer and really down in the basement during the winter because there's no rental sales and there's no sales of aircraft, there's no charter. All they get their money from is servicing lavatories on the aircraft or cleaning or fuel sales. And I think that's why the fuel sales are out of hand. 
Um, I can't stress enough the importance of this meeting tonight. I really believe no matter the outcome, at least we're talking about it. And I commend Mindy Smith, I believe is the operator of the boroughs. I commend her because I could not do that job because, as I mentioned, the business cycle is so uneven. I don't know how this woman has any degree of a balance sheet, especially on the off-season. I'd like to commend Matthew Ganoble, uh, the current manager of the airport. He's approachable, he loves aviation, and he listens. And I, I'd like to have him at Kenosha because that's not the, the case at Kenosha. My airplane right now is at, at the airport, and probably it's going to be dark when I get there, but uh, it's parked next to the museum. And there's going to be no services there. So if I walk out tonight and the tire's flat or have a dead battery, I'm stuck. And again, back to my lunch, somebody asked me what FBO is. And maybe tonight I would need an FBO to help me, and it's not there. But I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Jacob Smith. <coughs> Good afternoon, I'm Jacob Smith, address uh, 1918 North 9th Street, uh, Unit A, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. I'm a Sheboygan citizen that has been employed as a line technician at Bros Aviation for the past year and a half. I love my job and have excelled at it. I've become very experienced in management, customer service, and fueling and servicing aircraft. My team and I go above and beyond to ensure that our customers flying into Sheboygan, as well as our corporate clients, receive exceptional service. I've done everything from coming in at 4 a.m. for a cooler feeling, to staying till 1 a.m. to assist customers arriving late. I take pride in my job and my work ethic, and was especially proud of our team after another successful NASCAR event that went off without a hitch. I was then very surprised and concerned to hear that the Transportation Committee had made an FBO proposal was voting to repeal six, section 61.03 clause 2, allowing them to compete against us. Due to my interest in the matter, I attended the July 15th and voiced my concerns and in search of answers. The answers I received were questionable to say the least. The board referred to the plans as an FBO takeover, further raising my concerns of the ethicality of the proposal. A takeover by definition is a hostile approach to absorb control of an operation. Hearing that a government entity was trying to take over where I was employed was alarming. So I dug into the proposal pamphlet, analyzing the financial estimates, hoping to make some sense of their intentions. I was unable to. It was addressed by Mr. Payne that over the past two decades, over 36 million taxpayer dollars have been spent on the Sheboygan County Airport. It was then stated that as a result of this spending, Sheboygan taxpayers must still subsidize the airport's losses, totaling in the hundreds of thousands of dollars annually. The answer to this was to spend over $3.1 million more of taxpayer dollars to put Burroughs Aviation out of business. And it was noted that it's not unusual for municipalities to own FBOs. Though this is factual, what's being overlooked is that many of these municipality-owned FBOs were acquired during an economic downturn, and many of the FBOs had run into financial trouble. This is not the case for Burroughs Aviation. It was also stated that Sheboygan County Airport previously had two FBOs, and what wasn't shared was that when both these FBOs were in competition with each other, neither had the capacity to be profitable as there's not enough revenue opportunities at the airport to support two FBOs. Then I did some math. Of the $3.1 million budget for this proposed kind of FBO, $1.3 million of that will be allocated to an annual operating expense. And the total estimated annual revenue, once 100% of the fuel sales are achieved, meaning Burroughs is out of business, is projected at $1.4 million, resulting in only $70,000 annual dollars profit, a 2.1% return on a $3.1 million investment, leaving the Sheboygan taxpayers with a great deal of financial risk and little to no return or reduction of annual losses. In fact, it appears that if Burroughs Aviation is successfully put out of business, Sheboygan County taxpayers will be losing additional revenue they already have and extending your losses further. 
This makes little to no fiscal sense, and assuming that these are the best numbers that Mr. Payne and his advisors could come up with, are events like Ryder Cup and NASCAR factor in these projected revenues? If so, these are events are unfortunately unlikely to repeat and should be reduced out of their projections for more accurate comparisons. Something that you may not know also is that before my, Mindy Smith got a loan from Hiawatha Bank to purchase Burroughs, she seeked approval from the Transportation Committee. The approval was granted by the committee with them being well aware of their intent to change the ordinances and to compete and ultimately put Ms. Smith and Burroughs Aviation out of business. In my opinion, and many others, this is unethical. Mindy Smith is not only a dang good boss, but she's a dang good mom. And I'm her son. And she served our country for over two years in the Air Force and makes annual contributions to Salvation Army and the Food Bank and many other charitable foundations. She has the biggest heart, and I love her to death. And I'm not going to sit on the sidelines and watch as she gets pushed out of business at my tax dollar's expense. That's why I published a petition voicing my distaste for the pro proposal and has since garnished over 450 signatures of Sheboygan citizens who also disapprove. So I'm speaking to the county board as a Sheboygan citizen, as an employee of Burroughs, as a concerned son, that you take into consideration what I've disclosed to you before you vote on this FBO takeover. And I just want to let you guys know that I appreciate what you do as county board supervisors and you guys play a crucial role in uh, decisions made for the community and thanks for taking your time to listen to me and thanks for your time. Thanks Jacob. All right, next we have Faye Wingrove. Good evening, Bay Wingrove, 3122 North 7th Street, Sheboygan. Um, I am a business owner and long-term resident of Sheboygan County. I um, am, have been involved with the airport mainly in a volunteer capacity, serving on the uh, Aviation Heritage Center. And uh, my family, my brother is a pilot, and uh, my family has long roots with the county uh, airport. Uh, the Sheboygan County Airport was founded with people in our county that just stepped up, business owners that said, we need an airport. And that's the foundation of what's created our county-owned airport today. Um, there are a long list of companies and names, the Bratzes, the Valreths, that have significantly put money into that airport over time. Um, that airplane that's out there, in the main entryway, if you haven't seen it, that was donated by Terry Valrath. Um, there, there's a lot of cool stuff out there. Most of these pilots, and you know, whether they're for or against this, I know they, they, they love flying, they love that this is part of their community, and they want nothing but the best. And you know, I, I'm hearing change is needed, but I'm also, but I'm also very well aware <coughs> And I, I guess I'd like to, to ask, if I can ask our board members, has, have, if they have received the letter from a local corporation, um, Windway, regarding their, um, their um, stance on this situation. May I ask that? So my question would be, if you have received a letter from Windway r relating to their stance on this, that wasn't provided by me that I sent out to a few people. Could you please raise your hand? Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry that no one has received this letter because there was a strong opposition by one of the, there's not a lot of corporate aircrafts out there. Um, so if nothing else, I ask that this be tabled from the standpoint that you should have that access to this letter <coughs> that was sent out by one of our major employers in Sheboygan County who for the second time um, was not adequately represented when she sent a, a, a letter to the board. So in this situation, she is adamantly opposing the operated, operated fixed space by the county, that takeover. Um, her family and her business has owned a hangar at the airport for over a half of a century. So 
basically what we have here, again, is we know probably some change is needed. But do we want to take the airport, which, which was really created by business owners, by people in our community that stepped up and, and put that together, and just say, let's give it to the county. You know, the county owns the land, they lease the property, um, they get a payment, it's sitting in the budget as like miscellaneous revenue, last I looked. And do we want to take the business and give it to them, the fixed base business? Now, we have that. We have, we have Rocky Knoll, which is a business, in essence, that competes. We spend a million in taxpayer dollars, at least from the 21 CAF report, a million in taxpayer dollars for that organization. All right, so we're, we're saying we're going to take the county-run FOB, and we're going to make money on that to reduce the tax levy. Tell me if you know any situation where the government will do it better and cheaper. No cut on our government. But tell me, because it's just not panned out in reality. Yeah, government is going to do it faster, better, cheaper. It doesn't happen. And that's what we're saying we're going to do. We're going to save taxpayer dollars with this resolution. We're going to make it better than what private enterprise can provide. And I don't, I don't buy that. It doesn't pan out. Um, the owner of the, um, the company, the, one of the larger companies in our community, said that this is a waste of taxpayer resources for our county to build a second FBO. You will be putting the existing FBO out of business. Now, again, maybe change is needed, but this resolution doesn't really address the change. It just says, we're going to do it better. We're going to do it better. Um, so I guess if you vote for this resolution, you're going to say, we should take over things. We should take over maybe even the Marsh Bar. You know, because we lease them land, we can make some money off of food. We already have a nursing home that we take taxpayer dollars for. So in the end, um, we need change. We get that. We're hearing that from people. But is it going to make sense for us to take over a, a, a privately owned enterprise that's been that way forever? And apparently we tried this once and it failed um, once before. Or are we going to let business be what they're here to do, run a business. And I sure hope we don't continue to compete against businesses in our community. Government is a service for those that can't afford it, not for us to go and try to be the biggest and best with taxpayers' dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Luke Chiarelli. Good evening, board members. Uh, my name is Luke Shirelli, uh, 1509 North Prospect, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm the business attorney for Burroughs Aviation. I've been the business attorney for the last dozen or so years. Um, I'm here tonight uh, to speak, I guess, in favor of keeping Burroughs Aviation, obviously. Uh, I've heard a couple of the, I guess, opposing parties, the gentleman in the back here. Uh, oddly, I actually agree with them. Um, but you have to remember, when I say I agree with the opposing parties, uh, would we all like airline, airplane fuel to be lower? Would we like better service, faster service? Um, pick anything that they want to say that they want better. A couple of our people have said we want change. Well, we already have change. It's called COVID. It's called a national um, election coming up that's a mess already. We've got a governor race. It's a mess already. Um, Sheboygan, uh, I mean, I'm out of Milwaukee, so we're facing change all the time. Sheboygan is a smaller venue. Uh, you've been very lucky to not have a lot of change up here. Still, you're affected by it. As far as Burroughs Aviation goes and having an airport, an FBO, um, Mindy Smith, I've known her for goodness knows a dozen or so years. Um, she's She's struggling. She's struggling with supply chain issues, COVID issues, uh, just everything in, in general. We've had a couple of people say, we have high volume, we have low volume in the winter. How do you balance that? You as the board members 
are, are sitting here waiting to vote to say, you know what, we should take over and run that ourselves and have all of those headaches that a private individual who's been running this for a dozen plus years, who's a veteran herself, who has gone through all of that and is still struggling, but she's surviving. That's what counts. As private industry goes, that's what matters. Um, currently, I'm the business attorney at my firm. So I'm working with your uh, legal counsel here, as well as the executive board. Uh, two appraisers have been uh, uh, looked for, one for us, one for Sheboygan County, to figure out how much is Burroughs Aviation worth? Maybe the county doesn't want to spend $3.2 million and roll the dice on having one of you try and run a competing airport, possibly putting both airports out of business. Possibly, remember, you're the landlords to Burroughs Aviation. How many of you are business owners and have started your businesses as tenants? What would you do if the landlord said, great, sign a lease, sign on to a three plus million dollar uh, loan package, only to have you, your landlord go, oh, by the way, I'm gonna set a comp up a competing business right next door. That's bad business, that's bad form. But from my standpoint, as a business attorney, have at it. You're perfectly within your rights to do so. But understand, as the business attorney, I have to protect Burroughs Aviation. I have to protect private industry. Mindy Smith, I have to protect her. She's a veteran. She's a woman. She's a business owner. For goodness sakes, if that's not Sheboygan, what is? And if the Burroughs Aviation goes out of business and the county wants to say, you know what, how about we spend that $3.2 million and figure out with our appraisers and your legal counsel here, who's fantastic, by the way, put us together. Put us with the appraisers. Put us with the executive board, and let's figure out a better way. But setting up a competing business, definitely not the way. It's a world of problems if it happens, and goodness knows it's a world of problem even with the threat of it. So with that, I thank everyone here, including the detractors from Burroughs Aviation, because goodness knows, they have airplanes, they want lower fuel costs. We all want lower fuel costs. Mindy is trying to get lower fuel costs. We hope, we cross all our fingers for supply chain issues to be gone tomorrow, with COVID to be gone tomorrow, with elections and politics to be out of the way so private industry and Sheboygan itself can thrive. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you to all of you. Next up is Mindy Smith. Uh, my name is Mindy Smith, 2611 Lakeshore Drive, Sheboygan. Um, first off, I just want to say thank you for allowing me this time to speak. Um, my name is Mindy Smith, and I'm the owner of Burroughs Aviation and FBO at the Sheboygan County Airport. Um, I would like to correct some of the negative implications made in the county proposal. First, I have a tremendous team of employees who are solely dedicated in ensuring passengers and crew members experience first-class service. Second, my fuel price is not high. During this time of high fuel costs, I was almost out of Avgas and was waiting for the market to turn down before ordering a load. It turned in the wrong direction and I had to buy an expensive load of fuel. I even marked it down more than my usual margin in order to help the Avgas purchasers. Third, I didn't run out of fuel. We had fuel on hand for those who absolutely needed it to get some get home and for our on-field customers like Kohler, Winway, and Bemis. We were to get a load that day, but the driver had quit that morning and they had no one else to bring the load. A load was delivered the next day. Fourth, I find it interesting Mr. Seavers is here. As the county officials already know, he is a problem customer. Um, he leaves without paying, refuses to return the crew car back, and is rude and abusive to my employees. I could go on, but you get my point. The following are excerpts are from a letter from one of my volunteers at the airport, and I believe it is poignant. Adam Payne recently addressed the Sheboygan County Committee outlining their intent to change the county ordinance and seek funding to compete with the current FBO. 
He stated they have already paid $36 million on the airport over the past two decades, and their answer is to send, spend $3 million more of hard-earned taxpayer money and put a veteran woman private enterprise out of business. He shared that it is not unusual for a municipality to own an FBO. While that may be factual, what may have been overlooked is that many of those now municipally owned FBOs were acquired during an economic downturn, and many of those FBOs had run into financial trouble. This is not the case with Burroughs Aviation. In addition, he noted Sheboygan County Airport previously had two FBOs. What was not shared is that when those two FBOs were in competition with each other, neither had the capacity to make money. Simply put, there is not enough fuel, sales, or revenue opportunities the Sheboygan County Airport to support to. During the airport advisory meeting, the county was made aware of this fact during an open discussion in the, on the issue by one of the two previous FBO owners, Frank Bratz, former owner of Western Shores FBO, Western Shores was ultimately bought by Burroughs Aviation. Financial concerns remain. As outlined by Mr. Bratz, Burroughs Aviation, and others, the ability for two competing FBOs at Sheboygan County Airport being able to compete and both survive is highly unlikely, thus potentially resulting in additional airport losses being subsidized by <coughs> Sheboygan County taxpayers or Burroughs Aviation going out of business. Per their budget, Mr. Payne, Mr. Schnell, and Mr. Grenoble clearly anticipate putting Burroughs Aviation out of business. This is an excerpt from the book. FBO capital budget, $3 million initial investment, 1.4 total annual revenue. Once 100% of fuel sales are achieved, thus burrows out of business. 1.3 total operating expenses, resulting 70,000 gain result and a 2.1% return on taxpayers, as Jacob stated. Based on their own numbers, they intended to risk additional Sheboygan County taxpayer money by spending an additional $3 million for a new competing FBO for a hopeful 2.1% return. This hardly makes fiscal sense. They're spending 1.2 on a new hangar building with 12,000 annual hangar rent, rental revenue, at best a 1% return on taxpayer investment. Burroughs Aviation current revenue contributions to Sheboygan County are fuel flowage payments, rent, and property tax. In 2021 was a total of $175,708. If they're going to put Burroughs Aviation out of business, of they will lose my 175,000 and gain 70,000 for a total loss of $105,000. Based on good faith and current Sheboygan County ordinances, Burroughs Aviation entered into a long-term contract lease with Sheboygan County to provide FBO services at Sheboygan County Airport. In addition, Burroughs Aviation may have entered into contractual agreements with other parties such as their fuel provider and banking institution. That may be adversely impacted by the county's decision to change their own ordinances. Sheboygan County's attorney and Mr. Payne have received aviation's letter outlining their legal obligations pertaining to Sheboygan County's intent to change their ordinances after the fact and compete directly against them with the unfair cost advantages set up by the county. As stewards of county taxpayer resources, financial obligations, and potential county legal liabilities, your role in Sheboygan County government is truly important. As a firm believer in fair and just competition, it's critically important for Sheboygan County to continue fostering an environment of inclusion and success while not becoming one that targets a private enterprise for the sole purpose of putting it out of business and taking its revenue to offset losses at its airport, one in which a veteran woman entrepreneur can feel confident in buying, owning, and running a business, and through her efforts and those of her teammates, make that business success while continuing to represent Sheboygan County well. With this in mind, I ask you to vote no on this proposal. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mindy. <clears throat> All right, the uh, final speaker, Jim Meyer. Good evening. My name is Jim Meyer. I am an executive with Hiawatha National Bank located at 777 Walton Drive in Plymouth. My organization, Hiawatha National Bank, has known Burroughs Aviation for a number of years, and we were delighted in uh, May of this year when that completed a full, re full, full banking relationship as we re refinanced the company's senior debt. As we were making a multi-million dollar financing commitment, our underwriting and credit decision requires a full, thorough understanding of the business and all elements that impact the business. And a major part of that was, a uh, major positive part of that was 
the fact that there was a long-term lease in place with Sheboygan County. Um, so that element made it a lot more feasible and we got the loan approved and it was very favorably received. As part of the, the lease commitment, as part of our loan commitment, uh, it required the County Transportation Committee to approve that transaction with the underlying ground lease from Sheboygan County. Transportation Department approved that with very little commentary, so we were pleased and the relationship was completed in May, as I said. Um, I was a little dismayed to find out just a matter of a number of weeks later when the proposal came out for Sheboygan County for their own FBO and uh, you know whether that is, I'm not going to make a legal opinion, whether that's a breach of contract or what have you, um, others can decide that fact. What I would say is it's an unethical decision and, and I think any of us looking into the facts of the matter would agree with that. I think as it was stated by several other people, the facts of the matter also are that two FBOs in Sheboygan County simply cannot survive. Um, there's simply not the volume, traffic, etc. So really what comes through in this is that the county will put Burroughs Aviation out of business. And if that's where, what our taxpayers want to see, you know, so be it. Um, I would also say that the county put together a nice proposal with, with some financial numbers, et cetera. I would just say I'm a bit skeptical as far as the proof and what those numbers really mean. If you put them side by side with, with boroughs, what other FBOs operate, um, I would be very skeptical. But I think as a general comment, I would say in my 40 years in banking and certainly as a, as a local resident, I've yet to see a governmental entity run a business any better than a private enterprise could do. And I challenge you to come up with one. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. That is all. That's all for public addresses. Okay, next is letters, communications, and announcements. Uh, there are two resolutions regarding private funding of election administration. One's from Taylor County and one is from Brown County. Okay, we'll receive those for information. Next is the County Administrator's Report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. I'm going to briefly touch on the status of the 2023 budget development process, uh, the sales tax revenue that we've received thus far, and then make some concluding comments about the FBO proposal that's before you this evening. First on the Sheboygan County budget development process, uh, we have a $167 million budget supports uh, about 207 programs and services implemented by 800 employees. It is incredible. We have an incredibly good track record of holding the line on property taxes. In fact, if you look at the last decade, the average property tax levy increase to support county government has only gone up 1.2%. And I'll put that track record up against any local unit of government in the state. Our county board is thoughtful, fiscally conservative, and we work in collaboration. Of course, every year when we develop the budget, there's always new challenge, challenges. We always need to be looking ahead. We always need to be thinking about how are we going to maintain this track record. And we've got some real tough issues. One is a net new construction increase that came in less than we anticipated, about 1.4%. That'll generate about $637,000 of additional property tax levy, and that's only one-third of what we need to support wage and benefit increases for our employees. Wage increases about 2 to 3%, a health insurance premium increase anticipated at 5%, and it's possible it could come in higher. We always have to be striving to diversify our revenue streams, consolidate, streamline, make tough decisions. In fact, in the 2000s, we had 1,300 employees working for Sheboygan County. And today, as I said, we have about 850. This board has experienced a lot of change and a lot of challenges. And time and time again, we step up and we problem solve. 
I want to thank uh, Deputy Administrator Elaine Krause and our Finance Director Wendy Sharnan for their good work helping lead the budget development process this year. Uh, all of our accountants, all of our department heads, uh, we really have a strong team and it, it gives me comfort as we go into this budget development that some way we will find solutions and we will once again deliver a balanced, thoughtful budget for the community. The liaison committees, the finance committee, the full county board will soon be in the hot seat reviewing all of these proposed budgets and of course the budget is to adopted on November 1st. On your desk this evening is the uh, high end, I mean high end, summary of what we shared after the 2022 uh, budget was adopted and it gets into some of the questions as well as some of the background, uh, some of the challenges that the boards had to grapple with. And again, I think we're very proud of our fiscal track record in this community. We're very proud of how we deliver programs and services. And our mission is to do it in a courteous, responsible manner. And that's exactly the track record of Sheboygan County and our organization as a whole. One of the secrets to our success was the leadership that the county board showed back in 2016, 2017, when we implemented the half percent county sales tax. That was heavy lifting. As I think everyone in the room knows, the state has their 5%, right? And then county government has the opportunity to add a half percent, us being 5.5%. Sheboygan County government really held out much longer than most counties. I think 62, 64, the 72 counties have now implemented the half percent sales tax. We really held out a long time. But when ultimately the county board made that decision, that was a challenging decision. They did it in collaboration with our heads of local government. They did it in collaboration with our Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation, the, the uh, business community. Uh, we worked together. And we were the only county at the time that when it was implemented, it was all going to responsibly maintain our transportation system, provide direct property tax relief, and we were the only county, at least we were at the time, that was sharing it with all 28 of our municipalities for their transportation needs. It's been highly successful. And if you look at the spreadsheet that's on your desks, it shows the sales tax revenue that we've received every month since 2017. And it's really grown. Back in 2017, well, really, look, let's look at 2018 as a whole year. It was about 9.8 million. For 2022 year to date, we received seven and a half million. We're projected to receive 12.6 million this year, and we're budgeting 13.2 million for next year. So the sales tax revenue has grown, but the county board has absolutely sustained its commitment or promise to this community. Every penny of that goes to either support our transportation infrastructure, provide direct property tax relief, and then as you know from your agenda this evening, we continue to share with the other municipalities and we've increased that percentage as their net new construction and economic development has been enhanced in their respective areas. So a tremendous success story and so important to our ability to balance our budget and not rely on property tax payers to shoulder more. Our Transportation Department, if you look at their overall levy use today versus 10 years ago, far less use of property tax levy. I think it's about a million, million and a half, and at one point it was upwards of between four and five million. Uh, it's really made a difference. So appreciate that leadership and support. And obviously at that time, Chairman Tom Wagner, Vice Chairman uh, Roger Distruti, or actually former Chairman Roger Distruti, those two really led the charge, and it continues to bear fruit. So we appreciate that. Take a look at that graph when you get a chance. And then finally, the FBO, and, and uh, it's not often that we get eight speakers that come forward and, and share feedback about a proposal, and I want to thank all of them for taking the time to do that. It's challenging to get up here in front of people and talk about things you like or don't like. And, <coughs> And, and we appreciate that feedback. I can tell you with 100% sincerity that we are listening as staff, as board members, 
we are listening. And not just to the eight speakers tonight, but we've been listening to the pilots and the tenants and the corporations that are currently being served out at our airport. We've been listening very, very carefully. And that's why we're here. That's why we're here. The Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation, it's been around for quite some time now, do a lot of good for the community. We presented our recommendations to them, and they've been listening as well. Who's on the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation? The Kohler Company, Sargento Foods, Johnsonville, Bemis, Aurora Sheboygan Memorial Medical Center, Master Gallery Foods, Rockline Industries, Millipore Stigma, the Sheboygan Paper Box Company, Old Wisconsin Sausage, Lakeshore Technical College, Lakeland University, Werner Homes, Rhode Jail. There are 30 private development corporation. They've been listening. Many of the corporations on this economic development corporation are tenants and corporations served at our airport and by the present FBO. In your packet, you can see a letter from the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation stating, please accept this letter of official support from the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation of the formation of the county-operated fixed space operator at the Sheboygan County Memorial Airport. The SEEDC has received inf input from multiple businesses with operations at the airport on their views of the current situation. Based on the feedback and the pre presentation from the county transportation staff, representing over 30 private sector businesses, we support the county's proposal. We're listening. There are also letters in your packet specific from Johnsonville. Johnsonville goes on at the end to conclude about the importance of being empathetic to the staff that work at FBO Burroughs. I couldn't agree more. I'd never met any of the staff there other than Ron Burroughs or Mindy in the past. And I'll tell you, for the last 20 years, to be candid, the relationship with Burroughs hasn't been that strong. It just hasn't been a real strong relationship. I think when Miss Mindy Smith took over, I think it improved but it still hasn't been as strong as we would hope. But that's my county perspective. What's the perspective of all the businesses and corporations that are relying on them? The Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation doesn't just write a letter like this willy-nilly. One of the speakers said, well, did you get the letter from the Valrath Company? One participant on the SEEDC objected to this, one. And I received that letter, and I followed up with that letter, and I was thanked for the additional information, and we never heard anything further. But just so you know, one member of the SEEDC board responded. So just sharing that. The other thing I wanted to quickly share is someone challenged, and of course I always take that personally. I hope anyone does who works for any level of county government. We can't do anything as well as the private sector. Really. I think our employees do a good job too. I'm proud of them. I'm proud of our team here. I'll give you one example. Look at Rocky Knoll. County board make tremendously difficult decisions to downsize or right size Rocky Knoll. Do you know Rocky Knoll is the only healthcare center in Sheboygan County that has a standing track record of providing five star quality care? We're not perfect. We have staffing challenges, just like any other nursing home. But we're providing the best care in the county. Where do you want to send your folks? There's an example. As we embarked on this proposal, it's really been in discussions for years particularly the last year and a half. And this is one of the ironies that continues to come my way with all this discussion. Miss Smith approached us in early 2021 and asked to sell to the county. 
asked to sell the FBO to the county. She approached us. We both agreed that we would get appraisals. Ultimately, Ms. Smith said, no, not at this time. And candidly, you know, communication can always be improved, both sides, I get that. But candidly, it was our read that maybe at that time she didn't have full ownership of the FBO. It would make some sense for the Transportation Committee as a formality to let Burroughs Aviation refinance. I think that was her way of taking full control and ownership of the FBO. I think that makes some sense. But just for the record, as I have said, and as you can see in the fact sheet, not only are we not reinventing the wheel, there are a lot of publicly owned FBOs. But Ms. Smith approached us a year and a half ago and asked to sit down and discuss buying her out. We are now, as was mentioned by one of the speakers, continuing that discussion. And we welcome it. We welcome it. What are our goals? Number one, we're listening to the people that are currently being served at the airport. I'm not dismissing the SEDC and Johnsonville and Bemis and these other companies. I'm listening. We're listening. Secondly, when it comes to property taxes, my entire career, I've been doing this job nearly 24 years, and I've always heard people say they want more services, law enforcement, mental health, whatever it may be, but generally, people don't want to pay for it, right? Oh, the line of property taxes. The other thing I've often heard is government needs to run more like a business. Why can't government run more like a business? I think Sheboygan County has a pretty good track record of being thoughtful and mindful and streamlining and consolidating and very careful about the bottom line and how much we're passing on. We have the opportunity at the airport, which is rare, we have the opportunity at the airport to eliminate the property tax subsidy associating with operating it going forward. As you all know, there's no state-imposed caps on borrowing or using fund balance, which is the objective here to purchase the FBO if we reach an agreement. But operations, we have a very tight cap. And if there's any opportunity in county government to eliminate property taxes and not ask our friends and neighbors and parents and grandparents to subsidize an operation, whether it's the airport or anywhere else, and we have the very users of the airport encouraging us to make a change, shouldn't we be listening? Shouldn't we be listening to them? So our, it's absolutely our objective to eliminate the subsidy. Will it take an investment? Yes. That's absolutely, we'll take an investment just as it took an investment to build our transportation complex, just as it takes an investment to put a new roof on this courthouse or at UW Sheboygan where we own the building and grounds. It takes an investment, but we're looking to eliminate any subsidy associated with it. And I think part of the irony is this is our airport. We've owned it, this airport for over 60 years, as was mentioned earlier quite accurately, in just the last 20 years, taxpayers have put over $36 million in infrastructure improvements. Why shouldn't taxpayers benefit from not having to subsidize it going forward? We have an opportunity. I really believe we can enhance services as is being requested. I really believe we can reduce the cost of fuel. I really believe we can eliminate the property tax subsidy. And if we can't, if we're unable to do that, nothing prohibits us from someday looking for someone to come in and compete. Burroughs Aviation didn't have any problem going in and competing with Western Shores. They won the day. Sheboygan County wants to own and operate our own airport. I think we've got a pretty good proposal here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next, we move on to consideration of committee reports. Executive Committee Resolution Number 5. Regarding approving standard intergovernmental agreement for 2023 county sales tax revenue sharing recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Brower. I will second the motion. 
Thank you, Supervisor Brower. Under discussion? Seeing no discussion, please vote. Supervisor Wagner, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. Motion is approved unanimously. Resolution number six. Regarding designating the Sheboygan County Public Safety Answering Point for grant funding under 2019 Wisconsin Act 26 and Wisconsin Statute 256.35. Recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Jorgensen. I move that we adopt resolution number six. Thank you, Supervisor Jorgensen. Supervisor Brower. Second the motion. Thank you, Supervisor Brower. Under discussion. Seeing no discussion, please vote. Supervisor Wegner. Yes. Thank you. Motion is also approved unanimously. Ordinance number one. Regarding amending Sheboygan County Code 61.03 Section 1 and repealing Section 61.03 Section 2 related to fixed base operator services at Sheboygan County Memorial Airport. Recommendation to enact. Supervisor Testrodi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to enact ordinance number one. Thank you, Supervisor Testrodi. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Under discussion. Supervisor Speltz. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I just say something, please? Yes. Okay. Um, in regards to the fixed based operator, I um, really tried to, I really debated about this. Um, I tried to get as much information as possible so I could make the best decision. Um, I think in many ways, possibly, you know, things need to be changed. Um, however, I have, uh, I have concerns about spending um, 3.2 million of taxpayers' money on something that would only affect like a small portion of um, taxpayers. Um, and ultimately, and I, I'm not sure, and I think there's a lot of unknowns with this also. I'm not quite sure that the return on investment would be in our favor. Um, and ultimately, I have to be, um, I have to answer to my constituents and my taxpayers. So that's, um, thank you, that's it. Thank you, Supervisor Spells. Supervisor Nunhoff. Hi, um, this subject arose to me first about, I don't know, five, six weeks ago. I didn't know anything about this and I didn't know what an FBO was. My career spending millions of dollars a year of a company's money, I knew what FOB was. That's related to shipping, but I didn't know FBO. So I looked it up, and yes, everything that our speaker, one of our speakers tonight said, meets what I witnessed on the website. So now I know what FBO is and how important it is to an airport. Um, another thing I want to share my career rated companies. I did business in my career but with about 800 companies, and I would say because of the amount of dollars we spent every year. We did a formal rating program in my life with about 300 of them. And that rated everything when you buy something, you don't buy just price. This broke down in criteria and rating. It's everything we buy, even as individuals, there's four criteria. It's quality, delivery, service, and price. Price is just price. Total cost is all of the four things I just mentioned. So when we're talking about what's going on with our FBO and the airport, it's total cost. I mean, one thing, I, another thing I did because I didn't know anything about this subject in the last three weeks because I want to make the right decision for our taxpayers, I met three times an hour apiece with people that know have good knowledge of this, either on our board or related to the business out there. And I did that so I make the right decisions for our taxpayers. I said last meeting, and I don't want to get lengthy, and I'll not be lengthy now, my concern is always our taxpayers. And I appreciate everything that you've done in the last years in the county. Um, and you mentioned it tonight, and thank you for that. So I was one when I was first married. This is very dear to me. 
I didn't even know who my representative, district representative was. When my f wife and I, for our first many years, got married, we had zero money. I didn't care about anything except the expense of my taxes and keeping my ha family uh, provided with basic things. So I would look at my tax bill, and it was the line. So me, I'm all about, for example, the person working at NEMAC. For those of you who don't know what NEMAC is, this is very dear to me. These are people that go in that facility every, every day and run a casting machine. That's hot iron poured into a mold. That's what they do every day. And many of these people go home and they don't have any excess money. So my point about this FOB, our airport, is whatever we're going to do as a county to do something wise financially. And I don't have my arms around it completely yet. I heard... I learned a lot in my three one hour plus meetings lately, and I appreciate all of our visitors tonight. I think we heard of who was here. Thank you for being here, you guest speakers. I appreciate it much personally. I think we heard, it wasn't quite 50-50, we heard five for the existing FPO and three against. Uh, that doesn't mean everything, it's a minority of versus all the people involved in this. I think there is some improvement that needs to be made. We, and back to my career, we gave awards out to what we called world-class manufacturers. Those are companies that were rare and did all of the things, quality, delivery, service, and price very well. I think that obviously lacks by way of the three people that spoke tonight and by way of many things I've heard lately. I walked around the airport a lot, and I think I saw on one of the things that was on our quality survey when I did business flying all over the country auditing companies with qu uh, professional quality auditors uh, was good housekeeping. And I think I noticed when I was at the airport like long weeds next to their, I think it was Burroughs building, and it's like, to me, this is very impressionistic. Tonight we heard many times about people, we want to serve the society, and this is all over the world now because of our airport improvements, and especially within the United States. And I don't think it's happening in its entirety. So I think some improvement can be made by boroughs. And I'm not here criticizing them. When we did audits on companies, we had to be forthright. And a lot of companies didn't win our business because they didn't do things that well. But I think based on people talking tonight and my little bit of what I know, some improvements can be made. So perhaps the county can work as an option. I'm not casting vote tonight with our existing supplier. Because one thing we've learned in my life is suppliers can improve. So maybe some meetings can be done to uh, improve things. So tonight, I'm going to say right now, I'm voting no to these. And the biggest reason uh, to, to not approve making the change, and the reason is why, I don't know why we're rushing with this. What's the rush? Burroughs has been there 12 years. Personally, this isn't about me. I just learned about this a month ago. But uh, I don't know what the rush is when we can take our time and maybe uh, consider some other things or at least educate people like me more <laughs> because I try, I'm trying to continually learn. But um, I want to do well for our taxpayers. I'm not sure if jumping off the cliff tonight voting yes for this is the way to go considering our county citizen. So... Uh, I'm telling you that's the way I'm going to vote, and it's primarily for one reason. I don't know why we're rushing into this. So thank you for the opportunity to talk. Thank you. Um, Supervisor Nelson. Henry. Thank you, Chairman uh, Koch. You know, and I have been listening. I've been listening to uh, both sides of the story here, and uh, I'm puzzled by a few things. One is that, um, you know, if... Uh, Boroughs should uh, go out of business all of a sudden and rebuild whatever we need to do the job. We, you know, there should be a hangar with, with the uh, gas handling facilities. All of a sudden, we have duplicate facilities. One set of facilities not being used, one set of facilities being used. And to me, that doesn't uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So. I kind of, you know, he kind of, Carl kind of stole my thunder there because what I would be hoping for again is 
perhaps a little more negotiation, a little more uh, talking, a little more helping each other between the county and the counties and the boroughs. Uh, as I read this, what it says is, according to the, uh, to the uh, proposal is, we're going to compete with them. And of course, we know what happens. Uh, everyone re recognizes that only one entity is going to uh, survive that. And uh, as I say, I think it's a little premature, perhaps, to, uh, to, uh, to go ahead and start planning on competing before we have a little more negotiation than uh, I would even like to see this tabled, or I probably will be forced to vote against it. Thank you, Henry. Uh, do you wish to respond? Just two quick clarifications. There is no rush. Uh, we've been working and interacting and seeking input on this for months including Transportation Committee, Finance Committee, Executive Committee, County Board Leadership Forum, Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation, Airport Advisory Committee, and other discussions with corporation leaderships or pilots. So there's no rush. Uh, the, the action that is being sought here is to change some language. That does not mean next week we're competing. It's positioning ourselves for that opportunity. And depending on what plays out with negotiations, I mean, as we were interested in a year and a half ago and continue be, to be now, we hope we're going to come to some negotiation with a possible purchase, right? That's in play. So the action that's being contemplated this evening, and again, has been unanimously supported by transportation, finance, and exec, is to change the language. This language has been there. Corp Council just shared this with me today. Uh, I think Supervisor Jerry Jorgensen deserves credit for it. It's been there since the 1960s, right? That's how long it's been since we've refined this language. So uh, this positions ourselves to be more nimble or flexible, generally what businesses seek. And going forward, depending on how negotiations go, we may either be purchasing or we may be competing. And of course, that discussion will internal, will continue in our organization. Supervisor Clark. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think I just wanted to uh, reiterate some of my feelings on this with, with the airport. And again, I am kind of like Supervisor Nunhoff. I didn't know a lot about airports. Um, but the way I view this, especially a smaller airport like ours, is that this is a service. You know, it's a transportation service. We're a smaller uh, airport, and that is something that I think, you know, we own it as a government. That's something that we can and should participate in and should be listening to the users of that airport. As we know, often municipalities and counties do contract with businesses for services that municipalities either should be offering, uh, but due to budget constraints, um, which seem to increase, we often can't. I don't know, I read the paper all the time, and I see um, some of our smaller municipalities struggle with things like garbage service. You know, you sign a contract and, and, then, and then things can get really tough. And then it's very hard in those smaller municipalities once you're in those contracts uh, to continue to offer those services. Um, you know, that, you know, even those businesses now are struggling with staffing and drivers and other things. So, I, you know, even in our Health and Human Services Committee today, we were recognizing some of our contractors that we've had very good relationships with, you know, are struggling with staffing issues and other things. But these are services that we have to offer. And so some of these things we were looking at taking, taking back as a county to continue to offer these important services. And I think with a 25-year contract, you know, it gets really tough to have the flexibility we need to adapt as the airport grows or shrinks or, or whatever is going to happen. I, I, it was very hard to hear tonight, and I'm sorry, you know, to hear about our FBO struggling. I understand fueling issues. I understand staffing issues. That's, you know, that's really tough. Um, and I think the idea here, though, is to, to change the ordinance to open up the, the FBO for competition. I don't think that means that conversations are over. I think the conversations with owners and with staff of the FBO can hopefully continue. 
I think this just opens up the flexibility to do that. So, you know, that's why I will be voting in support of this tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Clark. Supervisor Jorgensen. I too have struggled with this. Uh, I, I didn't know anything about FBOs, much about airports other than how to get a ticket and get on an airplane. Uh, but uh, you know, like a lot of you, this came, there are people in our organization who've been dealing with this for a long time and I appreciate their frustration. Um, on the other hand, most of us first heard about this in June and now a couple months later we find out that we have to change an ordinance in order to even make it happen. Um, there are a lot of pieces to this that I would have liked to have had open discussion amongst the 25 board members. Might have to be in closed session because some of the questions are tough ones that we don't want to have on the uh, public record because they, they don't, they, we're involved in either contracts or uh, legal questions. So my goal was to have that occur and it has not really happened. I've had one-on-one -on -one discussions with many people from Adam to Vern to you know Matt at the airport what I've learned is a lot of what I think I heard from Carl is that why are we rushing into this thing? I think it got to this point because it was some relationships that weren't very good. I think Adam maybe put a little bit of light on it. The relationships haven't been good. They got better. I ask questions along, uh, I ask a lot of financial questions, which I'll go to later. But I ask questions about when I talked with Matt at the airport, I asked questions about what is our process for handling complaints? Because I'm totally convinced we have to fix something out there. There's no question about it. How we go about it is really the mechanics of it is, is it for me. But we have to fix some things. But when I ask about what have we been doing in the past when we get complaints, where's our list of what the complaint was, who contacts who, what is our procedure, I got pretty fuzzy answers. And I'm not negative on Matt at all because I, am, I think we're lucky to have Matt. I'm very impressed with him, but I think our process has come from an adversarial basis where we haven't been talking closely enough. One of the, we have a bad contract. I think Carl identified this a long time ago. We have a bad contract. We all know that. How do we fix it? Well, there are a lot of different ways to approach it. One is to work with the people, try to get them to be better. One is to bring in a different operator, and ultimately we ha might have to run it ourselves because nobody else can do it. But I think we're a ways away from that yet. And, and there would be things on the financial side that are really, my previous life I spent running financial institution and institutions and doing lending to businesses. I asked a number of questions along the way about the pro forma that we have. Now, I know this is a different part of the resolution, but, but I asked questions which weren't answered adequately. I'm not saying they can't be in the future, but I asked questions like, Okay, who prepared this find who prepared this projection? And which of those people have an actual business running an FBO? That's what you do if you're the lender like the guy that got up here before. Nobody, nobody has actually run an FBO. What do you do then if you want to buy a business? Businesses go out and hire consultants, deal with trade groups. We don't have the operating statement for this place. That's been a I think they could offer that to us if they want to show us they're not making money and want to negotiate. I can see why they don't want to, but it's a, it's a tool. So we don't have a lot of that information we should have at this point in time. My move at this point in time is to not be in favor of doing anything where we're going to spend 3.2 to maybe twice that amount. I don't know what the rumors are and how high it'll go, but that's got an opportunity cost to the county. We're looking at a $200,000 deficit. But the opportunity cost of that three to five million dollars is two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year. A year. You get that by saying, what's our cost to borrow or not have that money to invest or have to, you know, we only get money from three sources, I think. One is borrowing from bonds, one is taxing the people, and the, and the third, uh, I lost track of where it was. Uh, uh, oh, oh, from operations like this. Well, anyway, so, so when, when we, try to take this money and we're taking, oh, it's, it's from what we can get at the third point is we have programs and reserves. Those reserves protect our programs that we have throughout the county. So that money comes from one of those three of those pots. And ultimately what it really does here is it comes to, are you going to have less reserves for those other areas? Are you going to reduce services in some other area? Yeah, it's probably going to wind up in the borrowing category. So 
that's why I talk about you know, the alternative uh, use of that money. We're, we're over there. We're talking about something. I don't know. Is the number five percent today? Somebody can adjust that for me. But if you take five percent on four, five, six million dollars, you're talking several hundred thousand dollars a year that we're foregoing the foregoing cost. Now that doesn't show up on a budget. It's not in this pro forma. It's not anywhere in what we do in government type stuff because we put a bunch of capital in to support it. Well, and we might have to put more in the future. But those are the kind of things that I would like to see us discuss in a different basis before we get, I mean, to me, I feel like I'm being rushed to vote on these amendments. I could be convinced down the road to vote yes. I really do want to support the county government in keeping the other party's feet at the table because that has been an issue and I really appreciate that. So um, my expectation is that it, that part is going to pass, but I would hope we would hold off on taking action on spending the money on the second resolution that we're going to be talking about. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Supervisor Jorgensen. Supervisor, excuse me, Supervisor Nelson. Henry. Thank you, Chairman Crotch. I just wanted to thank Adam for clarifying a few points there that were unclear in my mind. Uh, but I, I would agree with Carl and, uh, and Gerald. I, I think we need to really concentrate more on the negotiating part than the, uh, than the con I'll call it confrontational part of saying we're going to start a, a PO and that's one way to get people to the table, but it's not exactly the most friendly way. Thank you, Supervisor Nelson. Supervisor Bosman. Yes, uh, I'm a member of the Transportation uh, Committee, and, and we were shown the facts on this. And uh, I think the fact that we came to unanimous decision as, as a Transportation Committee signified that we recognize there's some issues out at the airport. Uh, I'm not saying these issues, there's only one way to solve these problems. Um, but as this discussion is going around, I think Adam brought up some good points. I, everyone had good points. Um, we need to, and as I'm seeing this, we need to pass Ordinance 1 to get off of zero. In order to do anything, we have to have the ability to be able to negotiate, to be able to be a player in doing something at the airport. The If you're not on the transportation, if you've never served on transportation, there are a lot of grant dollars that come into our airport that are shared and enjoyed by everyone who uses the airport. I mean, that airport, and I don't know the exact figure, Matt's sitting over there, he could tell us, but we are no longer a small airport. I hear people talking about it being a small airport. We're mid-sized to larger. We're, we're being looked at as a overflow or to take pressure off of Milwaukee when Milwaukee gets busy. We have businessmen who are telling us it makes more sense for them to land in Sheboygan and drive to the north side of Milwaukee than to go into General Mitchell and drive north back to their business or residence on the north side of Milwaukee. So this is only going to continue going forward. I think there's a lot of potential. There's a lot of talk a lot of grants, a lot of information we hear as a committee about expectations for what should be happening at the airport in the future. This airport is not stagnant. This airport's going to grow. And we have to be able to handle that. So I think, in my mind, number one, ordinance number one has to be approved for us to just play to get in the game and say we're able to negotiate. When it comes to using budget funds, we're just saying 
we want to have the option, as I'm reading it, we want to have the option or know that that money is available should we need it. That's no different than if you go to the bank and line up a line of credit for something that may be coming up. It doesn't mean you have to spend the money. It doesn't mean you have to buy the car. You don't have to buy the refrigerator. But at least you know if an opportunity arises and you need to act, you're ready to go. You don't want to be going, you know, trying to get an appointment at the bank and you know the car is going to be gone tomorrow if you don't have your, your financing lined up. So I think in both these cases, if, and I would ask anyone to answer me back, but I mean, I think we need to, in order to be ready, in order to be ready to go, whatever the case is. Oh, am I, am I running up against time? Okay. And I, and I really think negotiation, there's plenty of room for negotiation out here. I think we need, as far out as it seems, we have been having an operator at the Sheboygan Marsh facility for many, many years. Everybody's benefit. And I think we have an, a chance to do that here too. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Bosman. Supervisor Wagner. Thank you. Can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? I can hear you loudly. <laughs> I'll try not to shout then. I'll make this kind of quick. I wish I was there. But uh, as, as chair of the Transportation Committee and dealing with this issue, I just firmly believe that this is a necessary first step in moving our airport forward. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Wagner. Supervisor Grubner. Gruber. One call, no, sir. <laughs> I am impressed that the majority of our corporations in this county look to the government for support and for an answer to this. And I think it's been Adam and the rest of the group here have really looked into this. And so I believe that the county has the answer to moving forward for everybody on this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Gruber. Anyone else wish to speak? Seeing none. Oh, please. Go ahead. Let me make sure. All right, thank you. Just wanted to, to make a quick clarification to some of the comments tonight. Uh, we heard Supervisor Bosman say that this ordinance is really the, the first step, and it is. So I've, I've heard comments about wanting to have negotiations with the FBO. This, the passage of this ordinance would be consistent with that. Um, as you heard the county administrator mention, these uh, policies were put into place in the 1960s when the airport operations began. And we're now looking at them tonight to provide an opportunity or opening the door for the county to be engaged in some of these services. So for those of you who wish to see negotiations continue, um, that is the path that, that we're headed down. So I know there was some discussion about appraisals. Um, those are things that if you want those pieces to happen and that discussion to continue, passing this ordinance would be consistent with that position. Um, also wanted to make a quick clarification on the FBO agreement. It is a 25-year agreement that is renewable for three successive periods of 25 years. So in, in total, there's an opportunity for a 100-year agreement with the fixed-based operator. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Council. Seeing no other, oh, Supervisor Nunoff. A question just to clarify in my own mind. Did I hear you say, or did tonight, is there is there a dollar figure attached to what we're voting on, the potential of spending some money within this resol uh, resolution? Is there a dollar figure in there? And, and I'm happy to take that, Mr. Chair. In other words, if it's approved, is the, does the potential exist that some money could be spent? Regardless. All right. Sorry. Um, and Mr. Chair, is it if I respond to that? Am I on here? OK. Yep. Uh, so you really have two things in front of you tonight. The first yep. is this ordinance, which is the policy change of the board. This would be changing the policy 
um, that have been in place since the 1960s, and this policy would open up the opportunity for the county to be engaged in aviation activities at the airport. So that's what's currently before you. Um, there is also a resolution that designates funds towards either the purchase or the construction of the facilities necessary to meet the FBO minimum requirements. So we have the FBO minimum requirements that are part of the county code. That is a separate vote that will occur in the county board. So that's coming up, but this one does not have a dollar amount associated with it. There's no money involved in this, what we're voting on. That is correct. Okay, I'm just making sure. Question, then I'm finished. Did I hear us say this includes negotiation with our existing FBO? So the language. The potential of it? Is that correct? Yes, Anyone that, in here want to? Yes, that is correct. Uh, so the way that if this ordinance passes, the change would read that the, the owner, which is Sheboygan County, may engage in aviation activities as set forth in Chapter 64 of the County Code. So if this passes, that would mean that we could have discussions on potentially purchasing uh, the existing FBO. And may I ask for those educated in this, because I'm not, obviously. I'm new to the board. I'm five months old. Has any negotiation happened in the last couple of years, because this has spiked in concern with our FBO? Yes or no? I'm not trying to be difficult, but have we tried to visit with her, the owner, to talk about continuous improvement? Has that happened or not? Yes, there have been attempts at discussion, but no dollar amounts reached. No, no, I'm not talking money, just continuous improvement, performance, because that's really what this is all about, is the performance, the service part of it, which is many things within that, but so that has happened? Yes, it is my understanding it has happened. I have not participated directly in those discussions with the current. Is there anyone in this room that can say that for sure? I'm not trying to be difficult, but we're going to vote on this. The answer is yes. Okay. No question. Yes. All right. Thank you. Supervisor Jorgensen. Thank you. I'll be brief this time. One of the things that I learned along the way was we have a contract that is deficient in a number of ways from the county's perspective. Contracts, when you lease properties for a long period of time, typically have clauses that say, if I don't like what you're doing, you're not performing your part of the contract, I give you a letter and then you have 30 days to cure that and different things happen in different contracts. My understanding is this doesn't exist in our present contract for most of the items we're concerned about. There may be a couple extraneous ones, but this clause has not been used based on my discussion with Matt for a long time. And it's probably because it was frustrating to use. I don't know the history on it. But, but that's the missing element here is we don't have the hammer. And that's why the debate, it's really, from my perspective, it, it's a matter of technique. But I just wanted to clear that point for you because that's what's in most contracts uh, that are similar to this. Uh, you know, and it's not in this one. And it puts our county administrator at a real disadvantage. And that's why he wants to have more clout with this resolution. So that, that's all I have to say. I can't help it, I gotta say one more thing. Final time, Supervisor. I got it. After what's just been said by everyone, and I would hope there's some negotiation. I've seen continuous improvement in my business world a lot. Now, I'm not, I've never been in touch with the past history and with her, but I would think that after tonight and hearing all this, that she would be wide open to continuous improvement to get where we want it to be, called a world-class airport. We don't want our airport to be second to none, nor do I, and that's my point. I'm not ta saying this in favor of her. We just want a world-class airport, so I hope from what I know and what I've heard, that we're going to be open to sitting down with her and hopefully, productively, get better out there. That's all. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Supervisor Nonhoff. Supervisor Ellis. 
Thank you, Chair. I just uh, wanted to reiterate, I think that negotiation is important, and my understanding of this first resolution is that it's going to open up possibilities for us to operate at the airport, which would be really key, I think, to leveraging a good negotiating position. So um, everybody here who's talked a lot about negotiation and how important that is, um, if you've seen my email response to uh, some employees at Burroughs, I, it's very much my hope that we are under negotiation and that most of these folks, including people in the back who think that they're about to lose their jobs, don't lose those jobs. Um, I, so while I, I feel exactly some of the sympathies that a lot, of, a lot of people have talked about and some of the concerns a lot of people have talked about, uh, this to me, this first vote anyway, is a no-brainer and that it's a way to keep Burroughs' feet to the fire and keep the negotiation moving forward. And without that kind of leverage, I, get, I worry that same thing will happen that's happened two or three times in the past where the negotiation has started and then stopped uh, for whatever reason. Supervisor Spells. Okay, I'm just, I just have to clarify something. I was assuming that this um, ordinance was for the county to take over the airport. That was what I was under the understanding of initially, but now it's about negotiations. Is that correct? It, it leaves the it opens the door for that we could negotiate and not take over. Is, the, is it, Can I get a yes or no on that? I'm assuming it's not about us taking over, but it's about us negotiating. I guess it was explained not quite in those terms. So I, I don't know that it's quite as simple as a yes or no. What it does do is it opens the door for the, the county to provide aviation services at the airport. The policy back in the 60s was that we weren't going to be providing these services at the airport, and what's in front of the county board tonight is the decision as to whether we provide services. Either that's okay. through starting a, a, an FBO that's county-based, or maybe that is purchasing an existing FBO. So both paths forward, either competition or a buyout, are covered under this ordinance, which would allow the county to provide aviation services. Okay, so in, in other words, we could basically take over, it sounds like, or provide services. That's what it sounds like to me. It does allow the county to provide aviation services. That is correct. Thank you, Supervisor Spells. Supervisor Wagner, did you have a second discussion point? No, I think I forgot to take my hand off. Okay, up. all right. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think you're just testing it. Okay. Seeing no other lights, please vote on ordinance number one. Supervisor Wagner. Yes. Thank you. No, no, bring it up. Yes, and two nay, one abstention. All right. Next is consideration of committee reports, finance committee, resolution number seven. Regarding amending the 2022 budget for use of general funds for airport fixed base operator services, the committee recommendation is to adopt. Supervisor Testrodi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to adopt resolution number seven. Thank you, Supervisor Testrodi. Supervisor Colson. Okay, not a problem. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Under discussion. Seeing no discussion, Supervisor Jorgensen. Just, just to address the point he asked about spending money, if we pass this resolution and we could buy it for whatever the price is under 3.2 million, it's a done deal and there is no more consideration at the board level necessary. Is that correct or incorrect? I'll do my best to answer that question. So what this does is, is it amends the budget to 
allow for 3.2 million towards the purchase or construction of facilities meeting the FBO requirements. Now, um, I would expect that there's continued discussions with the existing FBO, and it may be that that dollar amount at the end of the day is higher than 3.2 million once we go through the appraisals and get those numbers back and continue to have negotiations. So I'm not sure if that answers your question. In terms of a done deal, from my perspective, no, it is not a, a done deal, and there will be continued discussion with the FBO. My question is, is the deal can be concluded within the 3.2 million or whatever's in the resolution? Would this board be voting on this again? If there is money in the budget for this, and it comes in under the 3.2 million, there would be authorization from this board to move forward consistent with the ordinance. So the answer is we would not be voting on it again, is that correct? If it is less than the 3.2 million. Thank you. Seeing no additional lights, please vote on resolution number seven. Supervisor Wagner. Yes. Thank you. Motion's approved. 17 ayes, 6 nays, 1 abstention. And I turn the gavel over to the vice chair. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Okay, uh, resolutions to be introduced. Resolution number eight from the Finance Committee. Uh, regarding 2023 five-year capital plan. That will be referred to the Executive Committee. Resolution number nine from the Finance Committee. Regarding supporting the principle of fair housing adherence to the fair housing law. That will be referred to exec Executive Committee. Resolution number 10 from the Transportation Committee. Regarding authorizing county aid for culvert and bridge construction in the towns of Greenbush, Holland, Wilson, and Lima. Thank you, that will be referred to the Finance Committee. Finally, ordinance is being introduced. Ordinance number two from the Law Committee. Regarding modifying fee schedule of medical examiner in chapter 96. Thank you, that will be referred to Finance also. Okay, um, we are at the point for adjournment. Supervisor Testrodi. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. I move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second that motion. Okay. Supervisor Brower, thank you. All in favor of adjournment until the next meeting, please vote now. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Speltz, Supervisor Gehring, Supervisor Immel, Supervisor Nonhoff, Supervisor Nonhoff. With those five nays. All right. You are adjourned. <laughs>